1237. Target should be inside, but I got zero eyes on her biomon. Fingers Honey, crossed it's not too late. Is that you? Ugh, I hate this life or death shit. Hurry, try hacking the door. Think you can trip it on your own, V? delays. At long last, Cyberpunk 2077 is out now and finally in the hands of millions who have been looking forward to its launch for nearly a decade. And as you'd expect from an open world RPG and one made by CD Projekt Red no less, there's a lot going on here. When you dive into Night City, there's going to be a lot in the game that it's going to throw at you in quick succession. And to make those early hours and beyond a little easier for you, we put together some handy pointers that you should keep in mind. So without further ado, Let's jack in. What you need to hightail it out of here without another word. Ain't got no mind to see you drifting around these parts. Got it? You like the sound of your voice, don't you? What's that, Drifter? What are you on about? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> yeah. Best that way. Don't rush the story. Let's begin with the most general tip we have for you. Cyberpunk 2077 is a lot shorter than The Witcher 3, with a main story that can be completed in about 20 to 30 hours if you want to stick to the critical path, but we wouldn't advise that. Go off the beaten path and do all of the optional stuff and side missions that you can. For starters, you get more bang for your buck, but more importantly, that'll impact how the main story plays out as well. Side missions can often be tied to the main story and have an effect on how events turn out. While there's also the fact that doing more optional stuff and leveling up will open up more options for you, like with dialogue choices, where you'll be able to pass checks to open up new possibilities that would have been locked before. Speaking of which, got you a little something. Militech training shard. In case you need to uh, brush up on your dance moves. Down for some target practice in VR? Sure. Why the hell not? Don't skip the tutorial. Within its opening hour, Cyberpunk 2077 will offer you the chance to take on its tutorial, right before you're about to enter the game's first mission. And while you might be tempted to just jump straight into the action, it's best to get through the tutorial beforehand. It'll teach you the basics of hacking, shooting, stealth, and melee combat, which will obviously be useful to you throughout the entire game. But it will also net you with XP upon completion, which you can never have enough of. Progression Cyberpunk 2077 has multiple layers of progression, but one thing that it emphasizes is player choice. Play the way you want, and that'll count towards your progression automatically. If you use your handgun often, you'll become more proficient with your handgun. If you stealth a lot, you'll level up your stealth stat, and so on. There are, of course, attributes and skills to unlock with points that you accrue within the game, but something that you should always keep in mind is the simple act of playing the game the way you want to play it will make you better at the stuff you tend to stick with. Athletics Keeping what we just spoke about in mind, we would recommend sprinting and jumping every chance you get. Doing that will count towards your athletics stat, and athletics is a pretty important stat since it's something that'll govern some of the most fundamental things you'll be doing throughout the game. Hacking and Stealth Approaching combat encounters in Cyberpunk 2077 can broadly fall under one of three categories. You can go all out, you can use stealth, or you can hack. The latter two often go hand in hand, and if you are going for a more passive build and don't want to engage in direct combat too much, investing in hacking and stealth is a smart idea. Look over the two branches and make sure you're unlocking the perks that can be used to proper effect in conjunction. Body and Tech Often in Cyberpunk 2077, you'll come across locked doors, which is always a great way to bug the hell out of players. But what's behind the door, you keep asking yourself. Which is why pumping attribute points into the body and technical ability categories is something we recommend. High stats in these two categories will allow you to get past most doors you come across, even locked ones, by either hacking into them or literally ripping them off their hinges. Storage as you might expect, Cyberpunk 2077 has an encumbrance mechanic, which means you have to keep an eye on your inventory space at all times. And given just how much stuff there is to pick up in pretty much every single location you visit, that inventory can fill up quite fast. 
You can store your weapons and gear in your stash back at V's apartment, but your car will also come in handy if you're looking for a more mobile solution. If you're ever far enough away from your apartment and find yourself low on inventory space, simply summon V's car and stash some of your stuff in its trunk. Don't waste money on vehicles. Speaking of V's car, when the game starts out, you'll have a beaten up vehicle to use to get around in Night City, and you will invariably find yourself wanting a better, shinier vehicle. You'll get plenty of chances to purchase one. The game literally bombards you with messages about vehicles that can be purchased, but we'd recommend holding off on doing that, especially in the early hours of your playthrough. Some of the best vehicles in the game are quite costly, and money isn't too easy to come by, so you'll be better off saving up for those than purchasing something cheaper but far worse earlier on. Besides, many of the side missions in the game will reward you with really good vehicles for free, so your money will be better spent elsewhere. Get Reinforced Tendons Ripper docks around Night City have a vast selection of useful cyberware upgrades to purchase, but one of the most versatile ones that you can get is the Reinforced Tendons. These allow you to double jump and come in handy in exploration, navigation, and combat. It'll take a while before you can purchase this upgrade since you'll have to save up some cash, but once you get enough money, make sure that you get the reinforced tendons before anything else. Texts Throughout your time in Cyberpunk 2077, V's phone will be blowing up on a near constant basis, and you'll be getting texts notifying you of a vast number of things. From side missions and optional activities to conversations with characters that can advance your relationship with them, there's a lot of stuff in your text that can have a tangible impact on your progress. As such, it's a good idea to keep checking your phone for texts and respond to conversations whenever you can so that you don't miss out on a chance to strengthen your relationship with them. Keep scanning. When you hold down L1 or LB, V will do a quick scan of the room, which will highlight all of the loot that you can pick up in your vicinity, be it junk or consumables or chests that you can open, and so on. There's a lot of loot to grab in Cyberpunk 2077, so to ensure that you don't miss out on anything useful or important, it's best to keep scanning your surroundings regularly. Basically, you should be doing a scan anytime you enter a new room or area. Disassembling Weapons There's an extensive crafting system to dive into in Cyberpunk 2077, and that, as you'd expect, requires lots of crafting components. Thankfully, there's a pretty easy way to get your hands on a decent stockpile of components. Pick up any and all gear, clothes, and weapons that you see around you, including the stuff that dead enemies drop, even if it's worse than the stuff you already have equipped, because you can always disassemble it and get crafting components. If you do it enough, you'll have a healthy supply to fall back on in no time. Sell your junk As we mentioned earlier, pretty much every single room and location you enter in Cyberpunk 2077 is teeming with things to pick up and cram into your inventory. And while a lot of those things are labeled by the game as junk, you shouldn't be ignoring that stuff either. Picking up junk does eat away at your carry limits, but selling all the junk in your inventory at vendors and drop points is a quick and easy way to make money in Cyberpunk 2077. Dialogue Options if you've played even one choice-driven RPG with dialogue options before, this should come naturally to you, but it still bears mentioning. When you're selecting dialogue options, before you select the yellow one, which is the one that advances the scene in conversation, make sure you exhaust all the blue options, if any are available. These are optional, ancillary choices that can reveal additional information to you, and some of these can even open up new yellow dialogue options. You have a plan how to deal with them? Could just take it by force. But they're expecting payment, so I could go that route too. Fine, the latter. But on one condition. You pay with our money. Nah. Know what, Stout? My offer just came off the table. Mistake. Big mistake. Avoid fast travel. Being an open world game with a sizable map, Cyberpunk 2077 does, of course, have a fast travel system. And while you might be tempted to make liberal use of it to save time and cut down on needless traveling from point A to point B, we'd recommend avoiding fast travel whenever possible. A lot of events can happen in Night City dynamically, which can open up new quests and activities, and exploring organically is the best way to come across these events. Additionally, when you're traversing through areas, you'll often get calls from fixers who will inform you about jobs and side missions. 
completing them will count towards your street cred. Fast traveling will mean that you are not getting those calls. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.